Welcome to the Model Health Show. This is fitness and nutrition expert Sean Stevenson, and I'm so grateful for you tuning in with me today. This episode is a real treat. It's with somebody who I admire so much, and I learned a lot from personally. And I'm on the road here in New York City. I actually just came here. I left Jamaica for our phenomenal life event with Eric Thomas with CJ and the rest of our team, which CJ's been on the show as well. And of course, you got to know who E.T. is, Eric Thomas, the greatest speaker walking around on the planet. And uh, it was just phenomenal life, to say the least. It was an incredible experience. Uh, it was my first time in Jamaica. And yeah, it's cracked up to be all that all that people talk about. You know, it was really, really amazing and had a great time. And just a big shout out to everybody who came out to the event and all the love and the hugs and and all the stuff we learned and that we talked about. I did a very special uh, session for everybody. And I uh, just want to give a big shout out to everybody who came out. And listen, do not miss the next event, all right? Make sure that you are there. It's something really special that happens at a live event, you know. Uh, our podcasts and the books, all of that is incredible and amazing and life-changing. There's nothing like being there face-to-face. -face. So make sure to come out to the next event. And I'll keep you guys posted on what's coming next. As a matter of fact, what's coming next is Bulletproof Conference. I'm going to be speaking at Bulletproof Conference. All right, this is going down in LA. And this is going to be April 5th through the 7th. And you can stay up to date. Check out the website, Bulletproof Conference. And you can come and see me, hang out with me. I'm going to do a very special talk there as well. So we're definitely going to have a good time. And also, listen, being that I'm traveling, being that I'm on the road, you know I'm coming equipped, all right? I don't want to just be a victim of my circumstances. I want to be a creator of my circumstances. And so I want to do things to make sure that I'm ensuring my, my health and fortifying all of my nutritional bases in the best of my capabilities when I'm traveling and I might not have ideal circumstances. So... And this is a true story. One of the things that I've been doing lately is because I love it so much. And I literally, this when I'm at home, I have this every day. And I was just like, well, when I travel, I just do without it. But I'm not doing that no more. All right. I'm packing my baby up real nice and, you know, putting some nice covering on it so it doesn't explode in my luggage. But I'm bringing my MCT oil with me. All right. I absolutely love the On It Emulsified MCT oil. And listen, MCTs, are this is one of the things that you're going to continue to hear about long into the future because of all the incredible things that MCTs can do inside of the human body. So these are medium chain triglycerides. And so one of the things is the thermogenic effects that we see with MCT oil because they have the ability to positively influence our metabolism. And part of the reason is that they're so usable as energy by our cells because MCTs can go, because of their size, they can go directly through the cell membrane and they don't have to go through the liver for additional processing. Basically, a lot of food that we eat, we'll just say, you know, you're, you're eating some chicken, all right? Now, that's how my oldest son, Jordan, used to say chicken. For years, it was chicken. And it was the cutest thing, so I never corrected him, all right? So he's probably like in middle school when he was saying chicken and probably kids were making fun of him. It's like, it's chicken! But it's, you know, so you might, when you're eating some chicken, you, that goes into your, you know, your gastrointestinal tract and that it's a, it's in the chicken currency. It's not in human cellular currency. So it has to get converted in a sense. It's kind of like the dollars in the Jamaican dollars. I traded in like $300 for Jamaican dollars. They gave me back like 187,000 Jamaican dollars. And I'm just, I just don't get it. Right. So that conversion has to take place and that takes time. Right. MCTs go directly to the cell and feed, feed your cells, you know, cellular energy without that conversion because it's already in that human currency, if that makes sense. So we've got that. We've also got the benefits of supporting our gut health, which we know that this is the real, true, final frontier when we're talking about human health and wellness. Today, we're going to be talking about the human brain. The gut is often referred to as the second brain, could be called the first brain. At some point, you know, so much going on there. We've got 30 neurotransmitters in your gut, just like what we see with, you know, with your brain. It's, it's just amazing. It's amazing. But this connection, this interaction is super important. And we know we've talked about this many times on the show as well. So MCTs have a particular capability of combating 
harmful bacteria, viruses, and things of that nature. So it's just good on so many levels and it tastes good. And the emulsified MCT oil specifically, guys, like if you're getting MCT oils from company X, whatever, random, like as Sean talked about the MCT and you see it somewhere, if it's not the emulsified, you're not getting that extra love. All right, you're not getting that extra joy or, or party in the mouth experience, all right? The emulsified MCT oil, it's like a coffee creamer. And so literally like I'll pack it, pack it up in a freezer bag and I'll put it in my suitcase and I bring it with me because I enjoy it that much and it really does fuel me. You know, um, for a lot of the uh, times, you know, sometimes my days are really busy and to be able to get that kind of nutrition, because another little thing I want to share with you is that the MCTs also support, you know, a lot of people are doing a ketogenic diet or cyclical keto MCTs. You can have this and it supports that approach because it triggers your body to produce ketones, which is phenomenal. And so being that it's that kind of fuel, if you're doing like intermittent fasting, this is supportive of that because it's kind of like a fast mimicking source of nutrition. So, so many great benefits. One of my favorite things on the planet. Check it out right now. Onit.com forward slash model. That's O-N-N-I-T dot com forward slash model. You get 10% off everything that Onit carries from their incredible, incredible nutritional products to the fitness equipment and so much more. So pop over there, check them out, onit.com forward slash model for 10% off. Now let's get to the Apple Podcast Review of the Week. Another five-star review titled Best Podcast Out There By Far by Justine Del P. Hi, Sean. I've been meaning to leave this review for quite some time. The Model Health Show is the first podcast I really started listening to and continues to be my favorite. As a clinical social worker who works in the mental health field and has worked with eating disorders for many years, I really appreciate how this show never promotes restrictive eating or a one-size-fits-all subscription to nutrition and exercise. I have loved seeing how the podcast has evolved over time and how the topics for health and wellness have expanded so much, showing us that our health and wellness includes taking care of ourselves as a whole not just focusing on what we are eating or how much we're exercising. Personally, as I continue my journey to improve my health and wellness overall, I know I can listen to the Model Health Show and learn something new, feel inspired, motivated, and never feel ashamed for not having everything figured out already. Thank you, Sean, for all the work you do. You are truly an inspiration. Love a devoted fan, Justine. Justine, that has just filled me up so much today. That's truly filled my cup. Thank you so very much. That's the mission and why, you know, why so much is going into this is exactly that. And that's what model health really is. It's having health in all areas of life, not just physical fitness, which there's a difference between fitness and health in and of itself, but having health in our relationships, having health in our in our finances, having health in our careers, all of these things we want to bring to the table because all of those, in fact, impact your health health. You know, they impact your physical health as well. So all of it matters. And bringing on the very best people in the world to provide you a template and a model for you to create your own model because that's what it's really about. Because you are something special. You have a specific, unique gift, talent, capacity, and as you are going through and and pulling these different things and creating your own story, uh, those things are gonna be able to truly shine through. So thank you so much for leaving me that review. And everybody, if you've yet to do so, please pop over to Apple Podcasts and leave a review for the show, all right? I would appreciate that so very much and let everybody know what you think about the show. And on that note, let's get to our special guest and topic of the day. My guest today is Dr. Wendy Suzuki, and she is a professor of neuroscience and psychology at New York University Center for Neuroscience, and she's also a popular science communicator, all right? She's out there giving talks. She's speaking to the masses. She's making a big impact, and that's where I first met her, actually, was at a conference, and she's also the author of Healthy Brain, Happy Life, a personal program to activate your brain and do everything everything better. It's definitely one of my favorite books. And we're starting this episode off a little bit differently because we're going right into the conversation. We're already talking about some cool stuff and I wanted you to be able to join in on the conversation as it's happening. So check out this interview with Dr. Wendy Suzuki. How you feeling? You want more water? I feel better with her here. (laughs) Mark is all right, you know, but... uh, (laughs) Oh, I got some water right here. Thank you. You Appreciate it. 
Yeah. All right, we're on. Apparently, it's from Fiji. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We trust a lot in our culture. Yes, yes. <laughs> this could straight up be from, you know, Wilmer's Jersey. toilet. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, oh, no. Yeah. Hopefully not that. I like that one. I, I actually think it tastes good. Yeah, so. Fiji's pretty good. Yeah, I like Fiji too. But you know it's plastic. Though, I know. You know? But there's BPA free, but there's other things with plastic besides Still, BPA. You but know, I do like this BPA free. I just went to this morning um, uh, seminar on new technology in plastics. How do you get rid of plastics? And you know who's the leader in that is Finland. Finland is the technological leader in developing ways, you know, other kinds of plastics. It was fascinating. So how uh, the, the, um, how they create things that will literally degrade in six weeks. It, a plastic container made out of their stuff put into a dump will degrade in six weeks. And new kinds of paper cups that can take, uh, this was the big thing, can it take alcohol? You know, it, it could handle water, but it, it, you have to be really strong uh, as a paper cup to handle alcohol. So now these kinds of cups are being... <laughs> Wait, this sounds like the mystic arts here. You know, this is some <laughs> Dr. Strange stuff. And speaking of Dr. Strange, but strangely amazing... It's so great to have you here with me. Thank you. And I haven't seen you since Chicago. I know. When was that? That it's was like I, maybe four or five years ago. Yeah, I think ago? it was three years ago. Three years ago? Yeah. Oh, wow. It okay, flew by. Years, and flew I, by. to be honest, I mean, you were the highlight oh my. of the event. For well, you sure. were my highlight of the event. So, uh, And then um, we sat um, next to each other. Yeah. It's like, we're, oh my God, I love you. <laughs> So we had a great time, and um, it was also awesome. I had you on the show it was a couple of years ago now. Yeah, that was literally yeah. a couple of years ago, too. Yeah. And I'm sure, and I can't wait to get into this, just your life has changed so much. I know that you had the second biggest TED Talk yeah. last year. Yeah, 2018. Bananas in pajamas, right, right there. <laughs> and I can't wait to dive in and uh, just talk about what you've learned over the last couple of years. Yeah, yeah. So what's been going on? Gosh, so many fun things. Um I have uh, um, uh, really uh, expanded my research um, to to really ask what can my research, how can my research help you as a person individually? You know, how much can my science studies that's published in these fancy science journals really help? the individual, because I give these talks and people say, okay, well, just tell me how much, tell me how much exercise. I just want to know the magic formula. And I realized I was never going to be able to answer that question until, unless I actually did that, asked that question directly. Mm -hmm. And so that has led me to a different way to do my research, which is um, through the mechanism of a startup. So we are developing new ways to actually uh, individualize exercise prescriptions so that you, at your gender, at your age, at your fitness level, uh, we will be able to tell you what workout is maximizing your memory, what workout is maximizing your mood. And uh, so I could answer all those people. That was the number one question. Just just tell me how much. And that speaks to like pe people think differently too, you know, yeah. for you. I'm I'm definitely more of like a, a why person. Mm. You know, I tend there to yeah. just like I just want to know the why and what. Yeah. Like if I just find out something fascinating, mm -hmm. I'll figure out the how. I'll just give me a little bit and yeah. I'm doing it. Uh -huh. You know, for other folks, they really just operate in that language. Just tell me how. Just yeah. tell me what to do. Give me the thing. Yeah. You know, and so that's one of the things that I see with, you know, you've come from the very kind of prestigious academic mm. space yeah. and then getting out and communicating it with people mm -hmm. is a different ball game yes. because you have to speak to different ways of learning. Right, you right. Know? And so I love that you're doing that now. Yeah. That's really awesome. Yeah, no, that was great. And so that's been a lot of fun. I, um, I think it was uh, almost exactly a year ago, January 15th, so not that long ago, I um, fulfilled one of my childhood dreams, which was to perform on stage. So um, the first line of my book, Healthy Brain, Happy Life, is long before I wanted to be a scientist. I wanted to be a Broadway star. And so um, I don't know if you're familiar with this uh, venue down on Clinton Street in New York called Caveat, but it's a science nightclub. And they Wait, have... <laughs> hold up. 
<laughs> a science nightclub. It's a science nightclub. It yes. Sounds like an oxymoron. No, no. They have science related programming seven nights a week and beer on tap and wine. So they are being so innovative. And one day I got an email from them and said, we're bringing together science communicators and, um, and theater directors to try and create something new. So I went down. It was like speed dating. So we had to all get up and say, hi, I'm a scientist. I do this. And then the director said, hi, I'm a director. I do this. And then we had to rank who we wanted to work with most. Mm -hmm. And I matched with the person that also said she wanted to work with me the most, who is an amazing director named um, Lane Retmer. And she directs operas like small scale operas here in New York. Very cool, you know, she's the kind of person that could create a whole um, um, vision with zero budget, really talented people. And um, so she helped me um, tell my my kind of personal science memoir in mm. a theatrical way. Oh and my so I this got to amazing. perform this. Yes, it was when so was much this? fun. It was January 15th, 2018. Oh, is it recorded somewhere? No, because oh. it was it was just a um, a pilot. Yeah. So they were just putting people together, yeah. see what comes out, and um, so. But it it let me fulfill this. Yes, this that fantasy. experience. That's that's <laughs> wanna, magical. That's yeah. beautiful. Oh yeah. my goodness, I love it. So, uh, of course, I want to talk about some of the uh, just news insights for folks, but. There are going to be a lot of folks who haven't listened to that past episode yet, yeah. which is in the show notes. <laughs> Definitely go listen to the whole episode. But just give us a little snippet yeah. for new listeners about what, you're, what, you, what you do with yeah. your work yeah. and the uh, kind of epiphany that you had yeah, sure. with your first book and that yeah. data around exercise in yeah. the brain. Yeah. So um, the theme of my whole science life has always been what's called brain plasticity, how the brain can change in response to your environment and what you do. And so for many years, I studied memory because that's one of the most common ways that we change our brain. We learn something, we remember something that actually changes uh, molecules, it can change structure in the brain. So I was happy doing that and really focused on that. But uh, as I worked really, really hard to get tenure in uh, at NYU, uh, I found myself suddenly 25 pounds overweight uh, with no friends outside the lab because all I did was go to the lab and then go get takeout, eat it at home, and then come back to the lab. And I knew I needed to do something. And uh, I was also just really stressed out. It's, it's a very stressful thing to 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 try and get tenure. So um, I didn't know how to make new friends, but I did know how to get myself stronger at least. So I went to the gym and I noticed uh, immediately that mood boost. It just, it was exactly what I needed. I felt exuberant. I felt so up after every workout. And so, so I kept going and I got really, really regular. And it was only a year and a half later that I realized, you know, I think my memory is better. And I think my focus is better because I'm able to write my grants, my NIH grants, better and longer, and it it, it makes it flow easier. Mm -hmm. And that was huge for a scientist because that's that's the main thing that we do. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but the other thing that really made me sit up and take notice was not only what was improving in myself, but right at that time, my father had a sudden and precipitous drop in his memory and attention. Uh, suddenly one day he, um, he, he came home and told my mom that he couldn't remember how to get to the 7-Eleven that he had been driving to for the last 30 years to get his coffee. Mm. And um, I realized that everything that was improving in me suddenly went down in him. And um, as I started to research um, the effects of exercise, because that's the only thing that changed in my life, you know, as I noticed these improvements, I realized it wasn't only a powerful way to improve my own cognitive function today, but it had the potential to protect brains from aging, including from dementia and Alzheimer's disease. Mm -hmm. Now, it was a little bit too late for my dad because he was on the frail side at that point. So I couldn't just send him off to the gym and to, you know, to pump some iron. But um, it, it really made me realize that I had the potential to use my science knowledge uh, to explore something that had the potential to transform 
millions of people's lives. And, mm. and so that's what made me switch my research to the effects of exercise. And that's what inspired me to write the first book, which is all about how I did that and what I noticed in myself. And, and it's kind of a, a um, um, coming, not coming of age, but coming of direction story mm. for a scientist. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. It's one of my favorite books. Oh, thank you. And, you know, it was so awesome for me because I love ideas that just give legs to other things in our lives. You yeah. know, like people go to exercise mm -hmm. for the physical benefits, but then you're, you get a better brain. Yeah. You get better uh, relationships mm -hmm. because your hormones, you know, you get yeah. the endorphin, whatever, like yeah. things that influence other things. And uh, you kind of knocked over the first domino for me in really studying this. And I've done mm -hmm. masterclass episodes uh -huh. since on the various forms of exercise, the impact oh, they have on our brain and yes. our performance. But it started with you. <laughs> and you know, now, of course, having a couple of years since, yeah. and you've also traversed into some other areas like meditation. Yes. So yes, let's talk absolutely. a little bit about yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. So I must give credit where credit is due. And this was an undergraduate that was in my lab that said, you know, I know we study exercise. I love exercise. But I'm really interested in meditation. What if I propose a study and write a little, you know, university grant to do that. I said, that's a great idea. And right as she got that grant, I happened to meet at the director of a meditation studio, um, Journey Meditation, that said, you know, I'm actually interested in supporting that research. And you can use my form of meditation. That is a, a, a very um, uh, uh, kind of classic form of, of uh, breath and, and uh, breath awareness and, and body awareness meditation. I thought that's, that's fantastic. And so we paired together. And uh, so this paper was just published last year. And we looked at a very um, doable kind of meditation. It's not like, okay, now you have to start meditating an hour each time. It was literally 13-minute guided meditation that they listened to every day, seven days a week, compared to 13 minutes of a podcast that you would listen to every day because you're listening to something, you're trying to pay attention. And um, we got great adherence. People really stuck to it. And we got significant improvements in mood and stress responses went down in the people that were listening to the uh, um, guided meditation versus the podcast. Uh, focus went up. Uh, so this was my first little foray into meditation and really got me interested in how similar some of the effects of exercise and meditation are, are awesome. on your brain. Awesome. So how are you tracking that? Uh, so uh, we track both things in the same way. They are sensitive cognitive assessments that we take. These are standardized cognitive tests that many, many, many researchers have done before. We know exactly what a particular score will um, uh, means, and uh, we know what what a good score is for your particular age group, for example. So um, that is, and, and so we test um, stress. We test mood, we test memory, we test focus. There's so many different things that we can test with these standardized tests. So it's so fascinating to see, and I, I don't know if you've, uh, Dr. Daniel Goleman, yes. and he had a recent book, Altered Traits, oh, no. where uh -huh. it's just really focused on meditation uh -huh. and changing potentially, you know, our genetic expression yeah. and just like, it's just amazing, yeah. this inner technology mm -hmm. that we have access to. Yeah. And we spend so much time and, you know, trying to search in the outer world for some kind of like right. magic potion. I've yes. said magic a couple of times because <laughs> your stuff is super magic. <laughs> but, you know, the reality is it's coming from the inner world, yeah. you know, for for all of us. Yes. And so having this kind of inner technology and also making it approachable. Mm hmm. Right, that yes. ease of yes, because <laughs> if you're like, okay, you got to do a silent retreat, yeah, right. you know, you got to get your data, but you know, having that versus the, I guess the uh, another study group of just listening to a podcast for the same amount of time mm -hmm. and seeing those improvements, yeah, powerful, yeah. But just a shout out, podcast can be meditative too. Yes, all yes. right. So just Absolutely. saying, <laughs> awesome. So let's talk a little bit about for you personally, mm. um, and and. Taking that on, like, why Why did you say yes? For to meditation? Yeah. Well, you know, I, um, gosh, that's an interesting question because somewhere in there, I, I started my own personal meditative practice after years 
of trying and starting and, you know, Deepak Chopra, I would try that and I would get into it and I said, yes, I'm a meditator. And then I just give it up. It's just, it really didn't stick. Yeah. I was trying and trying and trying until my 50th birthday when I took a trip and I went to Bali with my best friend. And um, at the beautiful resort we were staying at, there was a monk who was a special guest there. And they said, would you like to do a tea meditation with the monk? And I said, sure, I'm on vacation. So I went the first morning and sat down. The monk didn't say very much, but he started to brew tea in a teapot. And he served it to five of us that were sitting there in silence. We drank the tea. It was kind of a big bowl, so I was kind of proud that I finished the whole bowl. Eight bowls later was when the meditation ended. But it was like, it went like that. It was so quick. Imagine we were outside in Bali. We had mm. the smells and the sights yeah. and the calm of that. And we were drinking just delicious tea mm. that were it was being freshly brewed for us in handmade ceramic bowls. And uh, every day uh, for the rest of that stay, I got to sit in meditation with that monk, including a day I was the only guest there. And so it was just the monk and I in this silent morning tea meditation. And every day since I got back from Bali, I, I've done that on my own. And that became my meditation practice. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I don't know if you know about this uh, kid's Lego cartoon called Ninjago by no. chance. All no. right. My, it's like my son's, my youngest son's favorite show. Uh huh. And the one of the main characters is Sensei Wu. And shout uh-huh. out to everybody who watches Ninjago or their kids do. And <laughs> he's just all about his teapot, you know. And really? he's like this master of, you know, this martial art. But his teapot is his thing. It's how he yeah. does his meditation, you know. So I think you were with Sensei Wu. I, I might have been. That might have been. But And I was curious immediately. I was like, okay, so it's it seems to be a lot more um, uh, of a transition or maybe, quote, easier to be in that meditation there in Bali. And I was wondering what you brought back with you. Well, the th- yeah, Bali was absolutely beautiful. But what I realized that helped me go from, you know, I'm just really not that into it to I really enjoy this every day was the ritual of making the tea, mm-hmm. the ritual of boiling the water, of pouring it out, of waiting it for, for it to be brew and then pouring it in my cup, drinking it and doing it all over again. Somehow that ritual mm. made it seem, well, first it reminded me of, of, of those mornings in Bali, but, but it, it became like my own personal tea ceremony. Yeah. Um, and it allowed me to create this sacred meditation space where I don't have to try not to think of my emails. I don't have to try not to think about what I have to do that day. It it really, um, for me, just open. It, it opens up that that open space that you want yeah. in in a meditation. So would you define that as more of a um, in the category of like mindfulness? Uh, yeah, I mean, I um, I define it and I've described it in in things that I've written and and in my second book uh in as uh open monitoring meditation it's just just feeling what's going on uh, being aware of your body i've added um and this was a really important ad that i learned from a podcast um uh loving kindness meditation i always add a loving kindness meditation which i was taught i don't know how you were taught a loving kindness meditation but but i was taught think of something that is just easy to love like a little baby or a puppy so it's you know it's like you can feel that loving kindness and then and then move on to your you know sworn enemies but what i started doing is doing loving kindness towards myself Mm. like can i can i be um the 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 super mentor that is my dream mentor but to myself for just a few minutes of the day and those podcast people wrote right. It was the woman who wrote the the book Quiet. Have you? Um, um, it's I've it's the power it. of introverts. Mm. Um, from it's on my list, and from listening to her, I want to read it. Um, but she was the one that um, uh, that recommended it, and I'm very grateful to her because oh, yeah, wow. I appreciate. I that. love that so much. And this is for me when I hear that. It just like it brings up this super powerful opportunity we have 
to channel those things yes. because a lot of times our feelings are just on automatic and yeah. our thoughts are on automatic mm -hmm. and we're just kind of seemingly at the mercy of them. Right. And to be able to channel something, like you said, like doing that ceremony, it channels that experience, yes. you know, with yes. Sensei Wu. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and having that because, you know, for a lot of us unconsciously, we're doing certain things and we're channeling feelings and experiences and we're doing them through methods that aren't serving to us mm. as, you know, love and kindness for ourselves mm -hmm. or yeah. the things that are moving us forward. So, for example, um, somebody might start off, you know, getting high with somebody in college yeah. and it's just that feeling of like togetherness and life is amazing. And, yeah. this, and then next thing you know, like they're just, you know, they're you know, in their late twenties and they're just going to get high in their car yeah. just to try to get by. Yeah. But the feeling is like the, the scenery is not actually there anymore. And uh -huh, they're doing this right. in a, in a negative way, in a sense that's yeah. not moving their life forward. So with that said, I just wanted to reiterate how powerful it is. If we can consciously yeah. create rituals and practices mm -hmm. in our lives yes. that move us forward, yeah. that can draw in all those good feelings. Exactly. I'm with you. That's a beautiful way to state that. And, uh, um, I think I was I was craving rituals in in my life, and that's that's one of my favorite ones. Well, it's definitely one of my favorite ones as well. I think it's about maybe just throwing this out, maybe fourteen years I've been wow. meditating. Wow! So I don't do the math, you know. My, <laughs> but yeah, it's 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 just been you know, and I've said this many times on the show that you know, for my mother in law when I first met her. You know, it was just my girlfriend's mom, you know, yeah. went over to, to meet her. I think it was the second time, actually. And she was talking about stuff. Uh -huh. And, you know, my girlfriend, she was just like, my mom is super weird. Just you know, <laughs> ignore her. We're in and we're out, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but she wasn't weird to me. Uh -huh. You know, it was like because I was very interested in how can I be better mm -hmm. at that point in my life. You mm -hmm. know, I just kind of overcome this health issue, uh -huh. but I still wasn't 100 percent. I was still yeah. dealing with these small things. Mm -hmm. And she said in this statement one day. She was like, if I can give everyone in the world one thing, mm -hmm. it would be meditation. Mm. And, and when she said it, this is the exact thought that I had. I was like, give me a million dollars. Like, wh <laughs> why would you say that? You know, what is wrong with you? You know, but I had no idea. I literally was so blown away. Like it changed. Every, it was it's more valuable than a million dollars. It's yeah. more valuable than a billion dollars. It is. In a sense, it's like freedom, you yeah. know, it's true, true freedom and, and, and self-awareness and, oh man, it's just such a powerful tool. If I could yeah. say one thing has been transformative in my, in my mm. life besides my family is, mm -hmm. is meditation for yeah. sure. Yeah. So, so great. Yeah. So I want to talk about uh, the cognitive enhancement through exercise. Yes. All right. So obviously we know through your work, mm -hmm. we see uh, increase in uh activity in the hippocampus, right? This memory center in yes, our brain. Yes. Mm -hmm. But what is, what's the connection with cognitive enhancement? Yeah. Yeah. So cognitive enhancement refers to, um, you know, the good stuff that the brain does. Can we make that better? And so, um, what does exercise do in that realm? Well, probably number one, it is improving your ability to focus, um, focus and shift your attention. Uh, a, an issue for anybody that struggles with ADHD and just anybody because we're just bombarded with so many different things. And it's a great value to be able to choose what you focus on mm -hmm. and and let everything else go. Um, that is enhanced uh, with, with exercise. Why? Because the growth factors and um, uh, the hormones and the endorphins that that are um, surging in your brain after exercise and that go up uh, as you increase your cardiorespiratory function uh, help the prefrontal cortex work better. Um, they help uh, the synapses uh, uh, make new connections. Uh, uh, it's uh, and, and some studies show even that the um, axons are growing and are, are getting stronger and, and uh, they're, you're basically strengthening these neurons in the prefrontal cortex. So that's one area of cognitive enhancement. The second is what you mentioned is the hippocampus. So the hippocampus is um, one of only two brain areas in the adult where brand new brain cells are born uh, in adulthood. And the only thing uh, that you can do today that will enhance that is to up your 
physical aerobic exercise uh, because aerobic exercise enhances growth factors. And it's those mm. growth factors that um, really seem to go up specifically in the hippocampus and they help the brand new neurons that will grow even if yeah. you're a couch potato, but they'll help more of them grow yeah. and integrate. And those new neurons work better than the old neurons that have been in your hippocampus since you were born. They're kind of like teenager neurons. They're all excited mm -hmm. and they get all uh, you know into joining different memory circuits and, and they help your memory work better. Um, so you want as many of those as possible. And um, the third major area is um, mood. Uh, and mood, you know, mood is one word. Of course, mood is positive mood, negative mood. Everything is going on there. Yeah. And what exercise is doing is uh, stimulating the release of serotonin, dopamine, noradrenaline, endorphins. that are all uh, uh, hormones and neurochemicals that are enhancing good mood. And yeah. so who doesn't want more of that? Right. Oh, <laughs> we have access to that, you know. Yeah, Again, yeah. it's just so inspiring to, to, to move some. And specifically, uh, aerobic exercise for this one. And when you say um, these growth factors, one of those is, is BDNF? Yes. Is that yeah. one of them? Yeah, one of them is BDNF. It's yeah. called brain-derived neurotrophic factor. Yeah. And that's the one we know the most about. But that is not the only story. Uh, there are a number of other growth factors mm. that we're still learning about yeah. that may be more important, not just for the hippocampus, but for other areas like the prefrontal cortex that we know is being enhanced. Oh, and let me just say that for the hippocampus, there's evidence that it's the aerobic exercise so you really have to get your heart rate up. Walking is good enough for mood, mm -hmm. which should make everybody go out and take a walk yeah. just to start to enhance your mood and get, get familiar with that. And this is going back to meditation, self-awareness. Can you be self-aware enough to know, you know, that really did improve my mood and be able to, this is where you get to do a little bit of self-experimentation. What is, what is that? That what, that what is that walk that is um, best for my mood? Uh, it, does it change if I do it in the morning, at, at lunch, uh, in the evening? Um, what if I go a little bit faster, make it a power walk? What if I walk with friends? Um, all of these things can be explored and um, uh, um, kind of refined for your own lifestyle. You know, something that came up for me when you were talking a little bit earlier and talking about the different parts of the brain and yeah. how it um, creates this amazing network. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned, uh, the synapse and you mentioned axons, you know, the axon terminals mm -hmm. and uh, another part is the dendrites. But yeah. I've got you here. Listen, yeah. I've got, I want, can you explain to people yeah. what is going on there? with those different aspects of what our brain is doing, creating sure, connections. Sure, sure. So you have just kind of outlined the main structures of the major working unit of the brain. So the brain, very, very complicated, but um, it's only made up of two types of cells, neurons and glia. Neurons are the workhorse, and they are the ones that have synapses and, and uh, electrical, you know, communication. Um, glia are support cells. Now, more and more is known that that they were thought to be just, you know, kind of uh, uh, wall decoration, but, mm -hmm. but they're doing much more. Um, we know a lot more about neurons, and it's the neurons that are um, uh, kind of the stars, um, one thing I can say, they're prettier than the dendrites. They're, they're more expansive. They have a cell body. Uh, they have um, kind of a, uh, they kind of look like a tree where um, cell body is a little bit like a trunk. And then the leaves are the dendrites. That is where the neurons are taking in information. It's receiving information at the level of the dendrites, at the, at the leaves of the tree. And then it has an output, which is kind of like the roots of the tree. And that is the axon. And those axons go to dendrites rights of other neurons and provide input there. And so neurons communicate through brief bursts of electrical activity called action potentials. And everything that we know about what our brain is doing. So right now you are looking at me, you're listening to me, you're comprehending my language, you are nodding your head, so you have motor functions. All of that is being done by um, these neurons and their brief electrical activity, uh, the action potential. Um, and so it sounds simple there, but, but to really understand what's going on, uh, more than many, many lifetimes of work. <laughs> I, oh my goodness. Like 
even when you were describing what's going on with me, I was like in a trance. Like, <laughs> wait, she's talking about what's happening in my brain right now. It's yeah. just so cool. It's so cool. So thank you for sharing that because yeah. it just gives us a little bit of a understanding. Sure. So what I would love to do is to talk a little bit more about exercise. And mm -hmm. I want to know what you do. And ah. we're going to do that right okay. after this quick break. So sit tight. We'll be right back. I don't know about you, but when I was growing up, I was obsessed with juice. All right, I'm talking about the juice boxes. Capri Suns? You remember when Capri Suns came out? The complication of getting that straw into that little plastic bag and shooting it all over your oneself as a child? Everybody had to experience it, but the Capri Sun was delicious. All right, it went from there to, you know, getting a little bit more fancy and having, quote, tropical punch became a big fan of like Hawaiian punch and that was my thing. I wasn't a big fan of sodas. I was getting the juice, but here's the thing. It wasn't really juice, all right? If you would read the package, it would literally say 0% juice in the juice. It was trickery, trickery. And here's the thing, how can they create these flavors? Uh, there's this incredible technology. We have a gas chromatograph that you can synthesize and, and extract and find those flavors and create them artificially. So what's the point in going and getting a real strawberry if you can create that flavor and that smell? And so we really kind of found ourselves in a nutrition black hole because of that and providing these things to our, our kids and our society as if everything is normal, but it's not normal. We know now that those fake juices were hurting us, hurting our metabolism, uh, introducing a tremendous amount of sugar, very uh, processed sugar that can really cause massive issues, whether it's with our, our brain health, whether it's with our metabolism and our ability to burn fat. Matter of fact, the name Tropical Punch, where does it even come from? It's really like a punch to your pancreas, all right? It's a nice uppercut. And so today though, the game has changed, all right? Now we have this updated knowledge and we have the ability to create a juice that's really special and something that's available no matter where you go because it's been low temperature processed to retain all of these vital nutrients and these wonderful, many of them red superfoods and delivering not just a similar flavor sensation, you know, back in the day we had crystal light. Don't forget about crystal light, but this is something that's actually going to add to your health and not take away. All right, my kids are also huge fans of the red juice formula as well. And this is why. One of the hallmark ingredients here in the red juice formula is acai. You've heard of acai. It's hot, it's hot right now. 10 times more antioxidants than just about any fruit that you can name. It's an antioxidant powerhouse that also assists your body in producing its own endogenous uh, antioxidants, which are really the most powerful forms of these things that really help to keep us younger, longer. All right, we've got some cranberries in there, all right? Cranberries are great for your digestion and for your bladder. Pomegranate, again, super hot right now. Pomegranate is full of uh, antioxidants as well and found to be beneficial in study after study for your cardiovascular health, as well as strawberry. We've got some blueberry in there too. Raspberry, great source of vitamin C. Gr vitamin C is great for your immune system for generating, creating new tissues. Vitamin C is great for your skin. And the list goes on and on because we've also got some other super herbs in this formula too. Cordyceps, rhodiola, ginseng. What am I talking about here? I'm talking about red juice from Organifi, all right? You need to get your hands on this red juice. It is amazing. It tastes good and also it is incredible for you. This is kicking the whole concept of these barrel juices and juice boxes that I used to get messed up on when I was a kid right down the stairs, all right? This is the real deal, all right? Again, low temperature process to actually retain the nutrients so you're actually getting what is promoted to be in the red juice itself. So pop over, check them out. It's Organifi.com forward slash model. You get 20% off of the red juice right now. All right, that's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com forward slash model for 20% off the red juice formula, the green juice, gold, everything that they carry, all right? But I highly, highly recommend getting your hands on the red juice. I like to have it in the afternoon, a little pick-me-up to give a little bit of a jolt and supporting your energy, but coming from earth-grown nutrients, real food, all right? So again, pop over, check them out, Organifi.com forward slash model for 20% off. And now back to the show. We are back and we're talking with one of my favorite humans, Dr. Wendy Suzuki. And before the break, 
I asked her and I want to talk about what does she do? Yes. She's the scientist who's put this information out about how impactful exercise is for our brains, our memory. But what do you do? Let's yeah, talk about that. Yeah. So I have recently um, set myself a new goal for 2019 exercise. And that is seven days a week, first thing in the morning, minimum half an hour, increase the weights. So I had I'm great at aerobics. I teach an aerobic kind of class. I love those are my favorite kinds of classes to go to, and um, and but I need more weight bearing exercises. And I always hated I hated push ups. I hated sit ups. I hated all of that. But now I'm kind of getting into it. And so I and also I do all online. So I do it all at home now to really maximize my time spent and, and um, um, make sure that I use every minute um, um, effectively. And um, yeah, so I just choose choose my weights workouts and I, I mix it up. And even if it's too hard, I stop it and I go slower and then I turn it on again. And um, I love the, um, um, the, I do it shorter so I can do it seven days a week, but I love the ritual that I create in my life of, of that is the first thing I do. So actually, I f first do my tea meditation, about 45 minutes, and then I do my exercise, and then I eat breakfast. So oh, that's what I do seven I days a week. It. I love it. I was wondering about the seven days a week, and I was like, ritual. Ritual. That's the thing. That's like you can't, uh, you can't skip it if it is part of your daily ritual. And that's just what I, I, will, I used to go to the gym – and I would go to the hour classes because that's what they have at the gym. And I couldn't work out the next day. I was too tired. And yeah. I needed to rest, which yeah. was fine. But it it was messing up my ritual. Yeah. And so now I do shorter workouts. And so I can do it every day. And I'm definitely getting stronger. So, um, awesome. um, And I can work harder because I know it's not going to last as long as as that hour. So for me, I'm really loving this new new formula. I love it. So you're going to be the one trip, you know, with the grocery bags, one trip. You're not going back to the car. No help. You That's carry right. all the oh, bags oh, yourself. Oh, of course. I live in <laughs> New York City. I have to go blocks <laughs> carrying my <laughs> my groceries yeah, that's so <laughs> nuts like the you know those are those small things that you don't think about but you know th this is also i've been here several times now at this point but that's one of the things i admire is like everybody is so they're just moving and yeah the, the way that they move is like i have somewhere to go oh, i have somewhere yeah. to be yeah and if you're in the way you know you gotta be careful <laughs> that's right that so is right. yeah it's so interesting so that aspect for me per so on the other side with me it's mm -hmm. It's 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 some something in the morning, you uh -huh. know. So this yeah. might be the strength training because uh -huh. I go I go hard uh -huh. when yeah. I do that. Yeah. Or it might just be jumping on the rebounder, but I do uh -huh. some form of physical activity yeah. every morning, uh -huh. even on Sundays. Yeah. If yeah. I just grab the rebounder, jump on that bad boy for ten minutes, uh -huh. watch a you know a, watch Wendy Suzuki's TED Talk <laughs> while I'm doing that, you know, feeding my spirit, you yeah. know, before yeah. I start my day and go out the door, whatever I might do. So yeah, it's just, it's the ritual, yeah. having that built into, mm -hmm. so your brain starts to come to expect it. Yeah. And then it will start to feel weird if you don't do it. Right, exactly. That's the trick. Oh that's the trick. So that's with those axons and dendrites. That's and right. So cool, so cool. So <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about some research that you've um, kind of been into right now. Mm -hmm with the EEG and mm. like long-term changes to the brain potentially? Yeah, yeah, Let's yeah, absolutely. That. So one of our most exciting recent discoveries has to do with um, the changes that happen after a three-month exercise regimen that we're really trying to get people to, to increase their cardiorespiratory function. And these were low-fit people, and we um, asked them to start going to spin class three times a week. And um, they did, three to four times a week and uh, for this three-month period. And we not only looked at their um, cognitive functions, so their mood improved, their memory, their recognition memory got better, uh, but we also asked, could we see any difference in the general electrical activity of their brain? And um, the most sensitive 
point that we found was uh, what we call baseline measures. So just taking, and this is this is non-invasive. This is EEG, ele- electroencephalograms, where you put uh, a little cap on your head. You might have seen it in you know hospital uh, pictures. Um, and um, you don't feel it at all, uh, yet it's able to measure a very broad uh, electrical activity that is being generated by your by your brain. Crazy. And um, we are measuring just as you're either staring at a, a crosshair in a uh, on a computer screen or just closing your eyes, just you know, want mind wandering, um, either at the beginning of this three month period or after you have completed your exercise regimen or, uh, the, the, um, control group there was video game playing. Mm -hmm. So, um, but this isn't first shooter video game. It was very competitive video scrabble that they were playing, Mm -hmm. uh, for three months, the same amount of time. Mm -hmm. What we found is during these baseline measures, um, a particular, um, pattern of electrical activity associated with relaxation is called the alpha wave. When you're relaxing, getting ready for sleep, you have higher levels of alpha. And so what we found is um, after the three months of exercise compared to those video scrabble players, the people that exercise had higher resting levels of alpha, Mm -hmm. which basically meant that their brain was more relaxed at baseline when they were in this mind wandering uh, period, which is consistent with the better mood that they had and also the better stress. Uh, We didn't look at stress uh, um, uh, response in particular, but other studies have reported that exercise um, can improve your stress response. And also many people uh, notice that in in themselves. Yeah, there's definitely so much anecdotal evidence for that one. Yes. But also uh, those out, Alpha is also associated with the ability to focus if we want to. You know, mm-hmm. it's more of a relaxed, intentional, like it's just a good place to be in yes. mentally. And yes. knowing that exercise is one of those tools that can get us here easier. Right, right. Oh my gosh, that's super valuable. Yes, that's so it is. Awesome. It is. Um, there's so many different things I want to talk to you about. Okay. But I would like, I would really love, since I have you here mm-hmm. and I know that you've got some stuff on the horizon, yes. which I have to, you know, have to do this again. Let's just commit now. Okay. Okay. That we're yes. going to see each other okay. more. Okay. Look, um, I'm, but yes, let's you're do that. getting into this <laughs> space in, which is, you know, really an epidemic now and, mm. um, you know, folks dealing with anxiety. Yes. And um, you're, the title of the book itself says a lot and yeah. it's already intriguing to me. So can you share a little, just a little <laughs> yeah, bit? Yeah, absolutely. Little, tiny, yeah. Little, little flakes. So my next book is called Good Anxiety, Bad Anxiety. And it's going to come out in September 2019. It's really excited about it. And I have to say that, um, so, so the basic idea is we help define um, what, Bad anxiety is. Most people understand what bad anxiety is. But we also define what good anxiety is. And the extra little kicker is that we identify ways that you could actually turn the core core features of everyday anxiety. Now, this is not hospitalization level anxiety that we're dealing with. This is everyday anxiety that you and I feel, which is why I'm an expert on everyday anxiety, as you are. Um, And uh, as we are, you know, as generally, as a general population. Um, But how does the feature of everyday anxiety end up turning into a superpower that you can Mm. use? And so I think that that also intrigues everybody. And I'm going to tell you how I, um, how we ended up going that, that route. Because first it was just good anxiety, bad anxiety. And I was, I was ready to jump into writing this story and, and um, um, really getting into, I had outlined all the different brain circuits that I was going to describe as part of the, this book. And I was literally days away from starting starting the first draft of it. And uh, I had a tragedy in my family. So my younger brother, who was only 50 years old, died of heart attack. And it was last May. And it devastated me in a way that I w- never would have imagined. It devastated the whole family. I mean, my brother was uh, such an athletic 
fit person. He's the last person that you would expect to succumb to a heart attack, but but he had one. And um and it not only plunged me into uh just grief, but a level of depression and anxiety that came with it that I'd never experienced before. Mm. And um it it was awful. I mean, I couldn't do anything. I was, you know, uh, uh, just went home, spent time with the family, uh, started to slowly heal. And um, soon after my brother's memorial, um, or right after my brother's memorial, I went on vacation with the same friend that I went to Bali with, uh, which was lovely. And I started to realize then that while it was the most horrible thing, I mean, I'm not the only person that had a sibling yeah. pass away unexpectedly. But I started to realize that it, it, it really changed something in me, and it allowed me to appreciate um, the love of the people that were left so much more mm. than I ever did before, uh, partially because I wish I had appreciated my brother more when he was yeah. actually here. And I realized, oh, my God, that, that's a superpower. I just discovered a superpower in myself that was born out of the most horrible anxiety and depression and grief yeah. that I'd ever experienced before. And I realized it's not just switching bad anxiety to good anxiety, because then I had to go into, I had to write the book because I already had a contract and I had to get it written. But you can find a through line to superpowers for all of those good anxiety features that we had originally identified and the book got transformed and I got so excited about writing it because it's like, okay, maybe this is, this, it, it, this was some little good that came out of that horrible experience yeah. that I had. Wow. I, a new meaning yeah. came from that. And yeah. that is, is super motivating. I'm sure on so many levels. Thank yeah. you for sharing that. And I, I cannot wait and, um, you know, I know, thank you for really for sharing that because I know so many people have experienced the loss. Yeah. And for many of us, um, it might've come, come at a time where maybe we don't really recollect or maybe we haven't experienced that, but right. you know, this is a part of life that yes. we don't really talk about. It's kind I of taboo. Know, it is. And it's like, because we don't want to look at it right. and it's, um, it's hurtful even to think about. And I'm even right now, I'm hurting a little bit thinking about it, yeah. you know, if somebody I would lose, you know, but, yeah. you know, I have had loss and I'm thinking about my, you know, my grandmother. Yeah. Oh. And since the, the, there's a beautiful thing that was born out of that, again, yeah. because yeah. I, I, same thing you just said, I cherish yeah. and uh, the, the relationships I have now even more and I'm yeah. paying more attention yes. and I'm asking questions because the one thing that I feel that I miss was, I, I, there's so many things I want to ask her, mm. you know, and now I just feel like, you know, and you, you can choose your own belief system, but just right. believing that she's speaking through other things in yeah. a sense, you know, yeah. and I'm, I'm just grateful. Just like, you know, it's just one of those things where it's just like, yeah. it doesn't seem like there's a uh, silver lining here, but you know, right. there, there is, and I can't wait. Yeah. I can, oh, I'm going to be the first to get the book I would imagine. <laughs> so can't wait for that. And, thank you. um, if you could, yeah. you, again, there's so many things I want to talk to you about, which I'll, we'll save some for the next time. Okay, yes. But on your first interview with me, mm -hmm. we talked about, uh, because you mentioned you teach. Yes. Not just the intellectual yes. science stuff, but mm -hmm. the aerobics. Yes, I do. But it's a specific flavor yes. that you're known for. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so I teach a form of exercise called intensati. Inten stands for intention, and sati is a Pali word that means mindfulness or awareness. And this is a exercise that was developed by uh, an amazing fitness instructor here in New York City. Her name is Patricia Moreno. She t still teaches here in the city, but I was very lucky to be trained by her. And because this was the form of exercise that motivated me the most, I loved going to to this class. And so I taught a free intensati class at NYU for six years, you know, wow. 12 months a year, once a week, all year round. Um, and 
then my schedule got too too busy. So I now teach it uh, for the lectures that I give. So I give a lot of lectures for big corporations, small corporations, uh, lots of different venues. And so uh, I just got to teach at a beautiful um, um, uh, yoga studio in Miami called Sacred Spaces uh, at one of the uh, um, an invited talk that I gave. That was so much fun. So I gave my academic talk to the group and then all 25 of them came to this beautiful sacred spaces and we got to do a whole intense latte session. And then we had a vegan lunch, which was delicious. <laughs> wow. That's so cool. And I love just the evolution. This is why I love, you know, talking to you and, you know, ha knowing you before and just mm. seeing all the things that have happened since. Yeah, yeah. And just, you know, our ability to kind of navigate and decide because for you, like that was a lot, six yeah. years yeah. for free in addition mm -hmm. to, you know, and then yeah. having this be a new path. That's yeah. so cool. Yeah. So, oh, so Intensati yeah. yes. is what? Oh, sorry. What is yes. So Intensati um, pairs physical movements from kickbox and dance and yoga and martial arts with positive spoken affirmation. So every move, like if you're punching back and forth, just front punches and kickboxing, you would pair that with an affirmation. Uh, for example, you would say, I am strong now. And another affirmation could be, I'm inspired now. I believe I will succeed. Uh, what I give is what I get. Uh, I feel great. Um, any affirmation that you want, you can kind of string them together in what's called a series. And of course, your series that you create for yourselves are based on what you're going through. So uh, struggles or or just celebrations. And it's a great therapeutic thing for the teacher. Mm -hmm. But the amazing thing is that um, um, all of these positive uh, affirming um, 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 aspirational kinds of um, affirmations that you put will mean something different to every single person in your class, which means that you see them all doing it as a as an instructor, and you 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 see their energy coming out, and you know that it's all positive, but it's kind of coming from all these individual beautiful places, and it creates this classroom that is just um, so much fun to be in. So, That's so yeah. awesome. And you're so awesome. <laughs> so really, are you. <laughs> thank you for hanging out with me today. Thank you. And if you could, can you let everybody know where they can find your first book? Yes, and yes. And where they can connect with you online. Okay. So first book, Healthy Brain, Happy Life. You can get it anywhere, Amazon. Uh, it's published by HarperCollins. You can go to my website, wendysuzuki.com, to, um, to sign up. Uh, you can get my second book. It is soon going on pre-sale on Amazon, and it'll be out in September. That's by Simon & Schuster. And if you want to sign up and do some interesting and fun brain assessments, you can go to my other website called brainbody.io, which is my new startup company. So, oh, so cool. Yeah. So cool. Final question for you. Yeah. What is the model that you're setting for other people mm. with how you live your life personally? It really is about um, finding and um, appreciating and offering the gifts that you have to to others and the world. So w what is it? Because when you're really offering what you, your unique gifts, that is one of the most satisfying things that you can do. Yeah. And so I think I've spent uh, the last few years really refining that and, and also learning what is it that I can give the world. And at first I thought it was, I am a professor. So I yeah. teach in this way. But then I learned that I could speak to a wider audience in in something like a TED Talk and and that I liked to do lots of other forms of communication like a like a podcast or or a performance or um, and so and I I love it. And, you know, the more you love it, the more the more you bring to it. And so it's finding out what I love and finding out what I can what I can share with others. Ah, I love it so much. Thank you so much. Wendy, you are the best. Thank you for coming. <laughs> thank you. Awesome. Everybody, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you got a lot of value out of this. And definitely pick up her book and keep an eye out for the new book that's going to be coming soon. And, you know, it's so interesting. The first time I heard about 
the intensity, which, you know, it's intensity, it's close, you know, it's like there's a double entendre there, but was from Wendy and hearing about this, con- because affirmations are something that has been a part of culture and it's even something that can be kind of funny, but it's also something that's used as a tool that's been very effective. You know, if you actually look at some of the science behind it, because words are very powerful. Mm-hmm. And when you're imbuing words with movement, just think about you dancing to music and how you know songs right now from when you were like five, right? The music and the movement, it just imbues it even deeper into your cells in a sense. And we're talking physical, like, and this is so so powerful is that, you know, our thoughts aren't just thoughts. There's a physical reality to those. And having somebody like Wendy on the show to communicate some of this stuff is just super remarkable. And so check if you ever get an opportunity to do in, Intensati or to see Wendy in person, definitely, definitely do that. And just leave this today as a catalyst for creating a routine for you revolving around exercise of whatever type so that you can get some of these brain benefits. All right, even if it's just walking, we get those mood benefits. And we've talked about this a lot on the show. Make sure to check out the Muscle Brain Connection episode because it's a master class on all the different forms of exercise, how it impacts your brain and performance. But the first domino was Dr. Wendy Suzuki for me personally. So I appreciate you guys so much for hanging out. If you got a lot of value out of this, please share it out with your friends and family on social media. And you can tag me as well. Let me know what you thought about the episode. And I appreciate you so much. We've got some great stuff in store. So make sure to stay tuned. Take care. Have an amazing day. And I'll talk with you soon.